So, welcome back to this class. So, in the previous class, we talked about the neuromuscular junction. I will give you uh, another visual of understanding how neuromuscular junctions could be studied by electrical phenomena. So, if you remember when I was telling you that this is the neuronal end and imagine this is the muscle end and this minute cleft we are talking about contactless is the neuromuscular junction. Now, the way you can study is that you can probe a patch pipette here. and you can probe another pipette here, an electrode rather, which is called a, the, you could have triple patch clamp mode, you could have quadruple and so on and so forth. So, if this is the muscle site you are talking about and this is the neuron site, you can inject different kind of compounds also in this configuration. Say for example, compound under test or you can inject them in this vicinity and you can study the different kind of current and voltages which are involved in this process. This is one of the most sophisticated biosensing you can do for toxin and Bioterrorist agent influencing neuromuscular junction. So, historically, most of the compounds which were initially being developed, they either lead to paralysis or they have resulted in damage of muscle, neuron or in the extreme situation they have affected the blood. But in this situation we are mostly talking about this part. So, when we talk about the neuromuscular junction you can use different kind of these techniques of intercellular electrode configuration to understand them. So, from here we will move on to the next topic. So, when we talk about patch clamp electrode I told you the next we will talk about the extracellular electrode and we will again come back to this whole process. When we are talking about extracellular electrodes as the name indicates extracellular means outside the cell. So, this is a configuration where you are not invading the privacy of the cell. So, if this is the cell which is sitting, the electrode will be in its closest proximity. Say, say for example, this is the electrode. and this is the cell. C stands for cell, E stands for electrode. Now, if this is the recording electrode, there will be another electrode in close proximity somewhere here, which will be the ground electrode and you will be measuring the voltage if possible, but it is extremely tough the voltage across it. So, say for example, if there is any kind of event taking place. In this proximity, there will be a change which will be observed or which will be sensed by the electrode versus an electrode which is sitting at a distance, which is your counter electrode or a ground electrode. So, the difference between the voltage of these two is what you are measuring, right. So, challenge of extracellular electrode and the advantage of extracellular electrode. So, talking about the advantage of extracellular electrode is that you can do a long term study 
because you are not damaging the cell. And say for example, if you could have the electrode like a planar array. Say for example, this is the surface on which you are growing the cells and you have the electrode sitting like this, okay? something like this. These are your electrodes which are sitting and your cells are sitting on top of them. Right? The cells are sitting on top of them. You can keep this inside an incubator and you can keep monitoring them from outside. So, what it looks like something like this, what is called as a planar microelectrode array, they look like this. If you give a search, of course, with my limited space here and resolution, I cannot draw as many as electrode as you could see in a picture, but this is something how it, it, it will look like. So, this is called planar micro electrode array and in short they call it M E A, M from micro E for electrode array A, M E A. This is called a planar microelectrode array. Now, what planar microelectrode array exactly show you. Now, for that you have to understand exactly what is happening at this interface. So, you have a electrode sitting out here, let us put them in a hatch line, this is the electrode. Right. And here you have the ground electrode and across it you are measuring the voltage, right. Now, there is a cell or excitable cell. So, as I mentioned, we are only talking about excitable cells is sitting on top of it, right. Now, we know inside the cell it is all negative. And outside, because of higher propensity of cations like sodium, it is more positive. So, if we have to denote a cell, you can denote it as something like this. Like a battery, right. Now, whenever this cell is shooting an action potential, so it is something like this. So, what is happening? There is a heavy, so so, what you are seeing is a baseline value is something like this and this is what is giving you the y axis is giving you the voltage and x axis is giving you the time in milliseconds and voltage is in millivolt. Now, your baseline is like this. So, at 0. This is the baseline you observe. Now, when there is an electrical event taking place, say for example, this particular cell is shooting an action potential. So, when it is shooting an action potential, what will happen? At this interface, some changes will occur. What are those changes? Now, we will, I am just darkening in this part and I will show you the changes what, what are happening here. At that particular location, there will be an influx of sodium from outside momentarily. Yeah. Inside the cell, this is exactly what is happening. Right. So, momentarily this particular electrode with respect to this particular electrode which is a ground electrode or reference electrode or ground electrode whichever we want to call it. Okay. 
this electrode sitting here, which is the recording electrode R e, oh, sorry, if I put this is a reference, sorry, then right, recording electrode will experience transiently a negative potential with respect to the control because where there is no movement happening. So, suddenly you will see a dip out here like this and it is going to come back because as soon as these move there will be diffusion which will be happening from the other sodium ions they will move and balanced it out, but you will see a dip like this and then what you will observe is that there will be something like something like this and if you blow it up it will look like or maybe like this. Now, this dip is telling you there is an electrical event which is happening there, because suddenly this electrode experiences as if it is more negative, it is more negative with respect to its reference electrode, because here there is no diffusion happening this zone is free from diffusion versus this particular zone and this is exactly the signal you get in extra cellular recordings, but these recordings so far cannot really measure the exact current, it can only see the change in voltage. So far, this is where the technology lies. So, when we are talking about planar microelectrode array and assume that each one of these are having cells on top of it. So, this is how you can see the electrical activities. So, you can add any kind of toxins metabolites or anything and you can see the electrical activity how it alters over a period of time. Now, these planar microelectrode array could be further used for a very interesting thing. So, we know that our nervous system is an organized structure and when we are testing toxins most of the time we are dependent on animal trials. So, for example, if it, you either you try it on of course, Drosophila, you try it on fishes, you try it on rats, mice, monkeys, So, this whole class is called the rodent class huh? and then of course, human. For all the toxins and drugs what we are talking about, there are many other which I am missing out, but the challenge is leave aside human, leave aside monkeys, even some of these testing paradigm for these ones is extremely lethal because from the animal ethics point of view, it is extremely, extremely torturing. When you talk about detection of virus, detection of toxins, where we are trying animal studies for the long term effects, these are extremely challenging. So, one of the approach which slowly gaining extreme popularity across the world is animal trial versus the concept of lab on a chip. We also call it now human on a chip system. What are these things? So, 
from microelectrode array, we will take a simple example and then we will slowly move about what are these next generation of diagnostic cell based diagnostic tools which are going to change the landscape of biosensors in a big, big way. Unlike what has happened before, we will be seeing a very different class of development in this area. And I will take one example after example to highlight this fact. So, let us get back to the microelectrode array. So, when you talk about a microelectrode array, as I have already mentioned, these could be 60 electrode, 120 electrode, So, for example, these are electrically active chips. So, one of the areas which is currently being worked out especially for neurotoxins is neurotoxin testing, neurotoxin screening, and testing. mimicking human brain electrical activity on a micro electrode array ship. This is the very first set of studies what I am going to share with you. Now, suppose there is neurotoxin which influences a particular area of your brain. Say for example, the one which is involved in movement. Say the area whose deficit causes or whose malady causes Parkinson, say substantia nigra. Okay. This is the area of the brain where lot of dopaminergic neurons are there. So, if you look at the human brain, it is something like this. This is the brain structure and this is the spinal cord running through. Now, different areas of the brain cross talk with each other. So, there are areas where you are having learning and memory and like this. Now, what we do not know say for example, Say for example, this is the area which is we are talking to you about say substantia nigra. And say so this is the area which is termed as hippocampus. And we know there is a toxin which exclusively acts at substantia nigra. Now, what we do not know is how this could influence, if at all, does this particular neurotoxin influence any other part, say hippocampus or visual cortex or any other area, how we can address this problem, right. So, this is where I am telling you mimicking human brain electrical activity on a microelectrode array chip for neurotoxin screening and testing. So, what we will do in the next class, I will give you an idea how the modern chip fabrication technology is altering the way the next generation of biosensors are coming up.
the next generation of biosensors where people are much more keen to marry the cell biology technology with photolithographic techniques, patterning and all other technologies in order to have a much robust biosensor for the next generation. So, I will close in here in the next class, we will pick it up from there, how we can develop or how we can mimic the brain structure and how we could recapitulate the electrical activity of the brain. Thank you. Thank you.